<laughs> Hello. Uh, early in the morning today, I recorded the video, which was utterly terrible. I decided to upload this video, even though I had a strong urge not to do that, because I made a fool of myself in this video. And uh, I didn't like the way I performed, but yet it, it's very it's very powerful to you know to look at yourself and see who you really are. And uh, if you look stupid or terrible, it's actually okay. It's not a big deal. It's better to be able to see yourself and to face your stupidity and this is the one way how we can get rid of our stupidity instead of hiding it inside we just try to be aware that it exists and uh, then we work on, on it and try to get rid of it that's actually what i'm going to do right now so this uh, video i'm going to check out my my own video which i recorded early in the morning and consider my mistakes. I'm not sure that I'm going to go through the entire video, but just uh, you know, to give you an example how I work and my mistakes. So this is, oh, wait, wait. So I have to, I have to share my, I have to share my screen. So this is my video. I posted just a few minutes ago, and uh, now. I'm going to work on this video and see see all my mistakes that's wonderful <laughs> like now i have in mind an idea that you know this video also may contain mistakes and then i may <laughs> i may start working on this video and show <laughs> show you how i correct my video where i correct my video <laughs> and it may go ad infinitum actually if, uh, if yeah that's that will be very exciting to record. You know, now you can see me talking about myself and uh, analyzing my. <laughs> Damn, it's so funny, and analyzing my own mistakes. But then I record the video where I analyze this video, the current one, and analyze my mistakes and work on myself. And there, there is going to be a picture where there is going to be me, and there is another me <laughs> in the up a corner of this of the screen and there's another picture and another me and it may go in the ad infinitum yeah i i really i really like to consider this idea <laughs> to give it a try anyway so let's let's listen to what i'm going to say okay this cementation on temper sounds good let's <laughs> let's go on Now I'd like to talk about uh, temperance for half an hour. Yeah, I guess it, it it would be a better way of saying that. So instead of now, I'd like to talk for half an hour about temperance. I would probably say now I'd like to talk about temperance for half an hour. So there's what is it? An adverbal manner. So first I have to say first I have to say. I have to use an object and then I have to say how, like how I'd like to talk about temperance. Okay. And see what I'm going to say. So this the the sentence, right? The first sentence. Let's just consider it closely. Now I'd like to talk. I'd like to talk. Okay, now I, I'd like to talk about temperance for half an hour to see, or in order to see what I'm going to say. So instead of now I'd like to talk about them, now I'd like to talk for half an hour about temperance and see what I'm going to say. So I guess the best, the better way of like expressing the same idea, the same thought would be now I'd like to talk about temperance for half an hour in order to see what will come up to my mind so instead of to see what i'm going to say so it's better to use uh, 
to use this structure to use this uh, the this uh, clause all right so let's move on because for me this is a special exercise which i use to train particular skills okay i call it meditation because for me it's a special exercise which i use to train particular skills so there's so much vagueness here so i call it meditation because for me it's a particular exercise which i use to train a certain skill or it sounds like it may be shortened so i call it meditation because yeah because because yeah, for me i don't i don't, I don't think it's it makes sense to say for me i call yeah, the first sentence there was for me now again there's for me i call it meditation because it helps me to develop certain skills so that's all for yeah because this is because this is a certain type of work which i'm doing okay yeah it's again it's unclear and uh, probably i'd like to replace the entire sentence let's just read it once again read it watch it once again Call it meditation because for, for me this is a special exercise which i use to train particular skills so how would i say it in a different way if i want to be clear and certain i call it meditation yeah what i what's the idea in this sentence so the idea is that i want to explain why i use the word meditation in the first sentence i said this is meditation and temperance and it's unclear since meditation it's a, a word which may be uh, used in many different ways so for somebody meditation is sitting and uh, contemplating their their belly or focusing on their breath or you know, for somebody uh, meditation may be uh, an activity where you sit and think about a particular theme. It may be an idea, or it may be a you know, God, or maybe whatever you like to think about. Or you may not think about anything at all. So you may meditate, and your goal is to shut down your inner dialogue. In all of these cases, it's going to be meditation. And here, what I want to say, so I want to distinguish my way of meditating from other meditations since i was working on what i call meditation for i would say eight years so the first time not even eight nine years so the first time when i started doing what i call meditation in 2012 i it was I recorded videos in 2012, not my video journals, but some videos where I tried to do meditation. And uh, now when I use the word meditation, I use it in a different sense. So here, for example, it's meditation. Here it means that I talk for half an hour, trying to be spontaneous and trying to observe what I'm saying rather than actually delivering some particular information, some knowledge and uh, i see now that i use the word in many different senses so the first time when i came up with this idea of meditation it was 2012 when i started practicing but there were like previously i had also many experience of meditation for example dynamic meditation and i read yeah the first time when i began be, began when i began practicing meditation it was 2007 but it wasn't i would say i repeated after i i found some techniques in books which uh, i tried to use and i did it mostly uh, 
in the same way as it was uh, prescribed in the book. Whereas now, since after 2012, I decided to make up my own ways of meditating. So I decided that I no longer need any you know, book to guide me in meditations. And I, I, I started using the word in my own way. And I remember it, uh, <clears throat> it happened after I, I wouldn't say that I read, but I, I, I took a book from a library. It was a book uh, written by Descartes, or it was a translation of Descartes. And uh, Descartes, he had meditation on the book, Meditation on the First Method. And it was the title of his book. And he used a word meditation in a special sense. So for him, meditation was actually thinking. And then I searched the origin the root of this word and i found out that meditation is actually a latin word which means thinking and after it, it was 2012 when i started using the word in this uh, in this way and i used many different ways of meditation many different ways of thinking for example for me writing a page in my journal it's a special meditation walking and uh, making a poem it's another type of meditation uh, walking and thinking about my past and analyzing my experience is the third type of meditation like sitting uh, in lotus and uh, thinking about uh, like one particular subject it's the fourth type of meditation sitting in lotus and not thinking at all and just observing my stream of consciousness is the fifth type of meditation sitting in lotus and uh, uh, contemplating my breath it's the sixth type of meditation there i would say if i count all types of meditation which i have i actually have uh, probably not a hundred of, the, of them but uh, a lot of uh, types of meditation for me all of them are different forms of thinking and uh, exercises which are designed to improve this or that quality or this or that feature in uh, my thinking and here i'm trying to say that uh, i use this exercise mostly to improve my imagination to improve my spontaneous thinking and also to avoid self-criticism to avoid all complainings since uh, whenever i record the video if I don't know exactly what this video is going to be about, if I just want to see my stream of consciousness, I often find it in like unbearable. So I start talking, I see that there are some mistakes that I can go anywhere. And often it leads to me complaining about my inability to be spontaneous, to be clever, to be witty and, uh, that's uh, how I use this exercise. Actually, it helps. So I would say that if if you watch my videos, which I recorded four years ago, you uh, you 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 will find what I <laughs> what I mean. Since now it's much better than it was four years ago. Even then, there was even it's even better than it was a year ago. But still, it's not uh, excellent. And I want to and I see how I can develop this exercise and I, how I can develop certain features. In my thinking by practicing the exercise and it definitely helps but again it, it's it's hard and those feelings which i have while i make videos like that or meditations like that i know that these feelings are very important for me to restructure my brain so if you want to know why i i can't now explain everything since my language isn't sufficient but you may go and listen to andrew Huberman's podcast when he talks about neuroplasticity. So there for two hours, he uh, goes into details and explains how our neuroplasticity works and why it's so important for us to have this feeling of embarrassment, to have this feeling of awkwardness. When we try to do something, we fail and we feel like insecure. So especially if, we, if uh, one is uh, older than 25 years, like this is the 
only one thing or one of the things like only one of two or three things which we can use to restructure our brain like this sense of insecureness in the sense of awkwardness and embarrassment and also balance but it's doesn't this no, no it's not what i want to say okay i use let's get back so i use Okay, I call it meditation because for me it's an exercise which I use to train certain skills. I don't think that a particular exercise, like why do I say the word particular? It's unnecessary here. It's just an exercise to train certain skills. Okay. So uh, I suppose that now I'm going to talk about <laughs> these skills, but it, it must follow logically if I said that I use this exercise to train, this particular type of exercise to train certain skills, I either must uh, say something about um, the skill or I must say something about the type of exercise. Yeah, I, now I'm talking about two types of meditation. Okay, how, how, how logically it came. So the, the, the first sentence again, this is uh, an exercise. No, no th this is a meditation and temperance. I'm going to talk about it and see what I'm going to say. I, I call it meditation because uh, it's, an, it's a special type of, uh, <laughs> it's a special exercise to develop a particular skill. Okay, uh, what type of exercise? Okay, there are two types of meditation. Two types of meditation. Okay. Two general types or most common types. Two general types or most common types. Why do I want to clarify it? There are two types of meditation. How would I say it if I, let's suppose I'm now writing, writing an article about this video or about the first, like what am I doing here now? I'm trying to analyze my mistakes and see and see how can I improve my performance. Ideally, I would probably take the entire video, all these 30 minutes, take a piece of paper and write down the entire speech with all its mistakes, with all the inconsistencies, and then sit down and rewrite it and analyze how can I write it better. Probably it'll take me an entire day, like 10, 10 hours of work. But after these 10 hours of work, I'll uh, finally come up with a five minute video or five minute speech, which I may basically say and uh, these five minutes like again it's not it's few pages let's 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 not uh, convey it in, in in videos let's convey it in, in text so it will, there will be a few pages of text which then i can use for you know whatever if there's some meaning in this exercise if i if i discover in this meditation if i discover something meaningful i will probably write about it an article to you know to make it clear and precise, but it, it'll take half an hour of work. But this is, if you're developing your language, if you're th if you're working on your thoughts and on your, if it's a foreign language, this is a significant exercise. <laughs> it's vital, absolutely vital to improve your language, to, to do this type of work. Since it helps you to be, more clear to see your own mistakes, even though it may be painful to record videos and then see the see them. Still, it's up absolutely necessary if you want to get ahead. So if you want to stay you know, as an ordinary person, if you don't care too much about how you speak, what you say, and how 
how your brain works and uh, you know if you don't care about different states of thinking since for me see as an ordinary person it's probably like for an ordinary person there's no way to actually experience amazing thoughts so to get really amazing thoughts to be able to you know to be creative to uh, write well to think well it requires a lot of work and uh, even if you speak well even if you learn to be clear and uh, say only those things which you know and never tell some nonsense and be precise it actually it's still it's still not enough the point is if you if you are if you are if you want to discover the depth of your <laughs> of your spirit of your language of your mind it's uh, necessary to get through all this work you may memorize essentially for us as human beings for general you know in, for interaction for interacting with other people we may basically memorize let's say 10 15 pages of text but again it's not the text is basically 10 15 you know most uh, common questions and uh, analyze them and come up with certain principles and uh, use these principles whenever we want to you know whenever we interact with people we may repeat the same principles in different you know in different uh, we may use different phrases to repeat the same principles and it may make us look smart so whenever we have a conversation we know what to say we know what we are doing and uh, in appearance we look smart what's the problem here the problem is that we have 16 hours of uh, awareness of uh, conscious thinking every day and of course all these 15 20 50 100 principles it's all nonsense so it's uh it's 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 it may be important for us to analyze the experience we had but in novel situations it's uh, it doesn't work that's the problem so if we have 50 principles and if we use these 50 principles to analyze our experience to interpret our you know whatever is going on around it's never enough and this is the problem so you may either memorize uh, 50 principles and use them to interpret what's going on and be and look smart but you inside you will not be able to think that's the that's the problem you will not be able to reach a certain level of thinking which will allow you to interpret everything in a spontaneous way and you know sometimes you'll make mistakes that's that's so that's so that's probably inevitable but it doesn't matter if you may make mistakes and if you do not attach to these mistakes if you go on gradually you learn to think better and then like for me if if you commit to the first way so if you say that for example okay i know 50 principles or 100 principles and i may develop new principles like uh, slowly so maybe one principle a week or one principle a month and then you'll be able to integrate this principle in your set of other principles and then again you always when you speak you know what you're going to say you know what you're talking about all the time it's slow you may you may appear smart but again it's <laughs> inside you see you you have 16 hours and if you ask yourself what exactly going on dur during these 16 hours you may uh, go in circles so if you have this 100 principles basically all your thoughts are going to be a, a repetition of these principles in this or that manner and you will not get anywhere and it's much more foolisher than to allow yourself to be uh, you know foolish at particular occasions but at the same time to be aware of your foolishness there was a nice example i was walking a few days ago in the forest and there was an example of a sentence let me let me recollect it So I was thinking about awareness and it was related to 
the second uh, exercise from the course of uh, English from scratch. So the idea is you ask the question, what am I doing? And then you answer the question. So for example, what am I doing? I am talking to the camera. I am recording a video. The exercise is called action awareness. The goal of the exercise is to be aware of our actions. And I was trying to think about the word awareness. So how would I replace it or how would I interpret it? What, what does it mean to be aware? And obviously one of the definition of uh, awareness is to know. So to be aware means to know. And I came up with the following sentence. I said, I know about my stupidity. Or no, 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 it was, I know that I'm stupid. And uh, if I replace, I know that I'm stupid with, I am aware of my stupidity. No, it was a D. Yeah, I'm aware of my stupidity. I know, I know that I'm stupid. No, it doesn't work perfectly here. Yeah, now I see it. But the idea is like, if you say I'm aware of my stupidity, you basically know that there's something in you which you are aware of and which you are working on so we should try to get rid of or we should try to rationalize or we should we should try to replace with something else and then we say i know that i'm stupid it's different so it's different there's different meaning you know that you're stupid but it actually like you criticize yourself you say i'm stupid in this sense there is no way for you to get further. There is no way for you to, like, if you really think, if you, if you stuck with this idea, I'm stupid. You do not grow. But if you say, I am aware of my stupidity, it implies that you know that it is here and probably you might do certain work to get rid of it or, you know, or maybe not, maybe you, you may even like it and you may say, oh, it's, like, it's not the point to get rid of my stupidity, it's the point to be aware of my stupidity and see whenever it occurs and not treat it as something smart or wise. So instead of getting rid of it, it's better to, you know, to create some kind of character out of it or to create some purpose for your stupidity and sometimes be foolish, sometimes be, you no, know, say some stupid things, but again, not, I guess it's one of my problems, since problems which uh, bothers me. I'm trying to be smart. I'm trying to be wise. But <laughs> at the same time, I see that there's so much stupidity. There are so many mistakes. And there are so many inadequacies <laughs> uh, in, my, you know, in my language, in my performances, in my speech. And I, instead of accepting it, and saying, okay, it's okay sometimes to be stupid. I'm not always stupid. Sometimes I'm smart. Sometimes I'm wise. Sometimes I'm foolish. That's okay to be sometimes foolish. I don't need to get rid of all my foolishness, since in this case, I'll become very pedantic and uh, boorish and whatever. So sometimes it's okay, but uh, there must be, it's te temperance again, meditation and temperance. How much foolishness you are able to tolerate. And what's your relationship to it? So sometimes you may say, foolishness is good, it's funny. Look how foolish I am. And on the other side, you may say, no, it's terrible. And what I'm doing here, like this self-criticism, how it works. So I start speaking, I'm saying something, and I feel that it's foolish. And instead of making fun of it, I attack it and I say, damn, I'm foolish again. What's going on? I don't want to be foolish. I want to sound smart. It makes me, me look like an idiot and people will judge me and say that I'm an idiot and I shouldn't publish it. Who, like, what? what? <laughs> I can Okay, doesn't matter. Let me, yeah, let me get back to the performance. One, two, general types or most common types. Most common One types. Okay, there are two types of meditation, and I guess it's uh, like instead of talking the two general types, two more common types, it sounds very unnatural. And certainly, the phrase "most common types" like, I, I never heard that phrase. <laughs> Somebody would tell that. 
So I'm just trying to make something up and uh, I see now it's, uh, and it's not a mistake, but it's, it's kind of, it's an attempt to be creative. Let's say to use words, like two different words, the common type, the kind, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's an attempt to use certain adjectives and nouns, which uh, do not belong to the same field, right? So I've never, probably like, okay, let, let me check out common type. Is it actually? Well, yeah, there is such a, such a, such, you know, like common type system, common type, common type system is common type. Yeah, the common types of cyber attack. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's, uh, it's an appropriate way to say a common type, but for me, you know, I don't like how it sounds. I'll probably not use it, but anyway, so for just this one sentence, it's maybe a shortened to, there are two types of meditation. And again, one is, one of them is, right? So the, if there are two types, one of them is, not one is. So our thoughts and focus on our breath. Okay, one of them is when we try to stop our thoughts and focus on our breath. Okay, see, there's a useless repetition. Like, why, why am I saying feelings and sensations? It's basically the same. I don't want like, to say it shorter. There are two types of meditation. One of them is when we try to stop our inner dialogue and focus on our breath or on our feelings. In this case, we try to avoid all thoughts and whenever our mind generates some pictures or some images or whenever it engages in self-talk. <laughs> okay, it's too slow. Once again, there are two types of meditation. One of them is to shut down your inner dialogue and focus on your breath or feelings. In this case, we try to avoid all thoughts. Okay, in this case, I don't like this expression. In this case, I I feel terrible. Whenever, yeah, the point is when, like what I'm doing now, once again, I want to stress it. There are certain words and phrases and struct, like gr sentence structures, like grammatical patterns, which I hate. If I use them often in my speech, when I record the video, it makes me feel embarrassed. It makes me feel annoyed. I want to reduce them or to get rid of them completely, but still I'm not pretty much successful at it. When I record videos, it doesn't mean in different situations, for example, when I walk and think there are no such thoughts there are no such phrases there are no such stupid grammar structures i allow myself to wait for 10 15 20 seconds before i say a particular phrase or before i use a particular phrase sometimes i may say a sentence and think about it for even half a minute before i proceed forward but here I do not allow myself to think. Here, every second feels as if I have to feel it with words, with, with stream of consciousness, with language. So if I don't say anything for a few seconds, I start feeling annoyed. I start feeling anxious. And this anxiety, 
it's basically a, what is it? I don't know, but it produces unnecessary compulsivity. It produces language which makes me feel even more annoyed, which creates even more anxiety and embarrassment. Is there any way to control it? Well, yes, this is the way. The work on mistakes and self-analysis. And obviously, of course, there are two types of two types of meditation, right? So this is this one is when I meditate and I basically train my spontaneity. I train my improvisation. And now what I'm doing, I'm basically analyzing what I've done already. And that's why, why now I feel much more confident and there's no, no anxiety. There's no embarrassment. Well, there is a little bit, but not as much as it was when I recorded the first video. All right, let's just check it once more. And too lengthy. So instead of saying, we try to avoid all thoughts and whenever our mind generates some pictures, some images, and you know, indulge us in a inner dialogue. Yeah. Oh. What are what are our goal is to shut it down? Yeah, our goal is to shut it down. Okay, it's basically a repetition of uh, what I what I have already stated before, and I want to kind of develop the idea. So there are two types of meditation. The first type is when we uh, shut down our inner dialogue and focus on our feelings and our, on our breath. So again, there's a repetition, it's unnecessary. I said something before and I'm trying to say it in a different way. So I'm trying to use a different grammar, different words to express the same idea. Since I don't know, perhaps, like what is the reason? So I don't know how to move forward. That's the idea of meditation. So that's the idea of uh, spontaneous development. So you just, all these steps, for example, in this entire video for 33 minutes, I actually didn't make, I made probably a few steps or three steps. And uh, in the middle, there was a moment when I decided to stop since I realized that it was stupid. And I started, uh, you know, <laughs> criticizing basically myself. The idea was that there were some steps and I couldn't go forward. So I started oh, this meditation, this is what I'm going to do, this is how I'm going to do that. There are two types and then I started expl exploring them and then I figured out that I can't move forward. I repeat the same, the same step over and over. I can't make the leap forward. And then I dropped since it was terrible and it made me more anxious. But this habit to repeat many times what you have already said again in some cases may be useful since when we have a conversation with people often we can see that they do not understand what we say so and if they do not understand it makes sense to restate what we have said in a different in different way so to find a more suitable metaphor or other words which may be more clear for our audience or you know people whom we communicate with whereas in some cases if uh, it's something simple and we know we see that people understand what we're saying it's useless and stupid to repeat the same thing in different words and especially when it just extends further and further so you say one thing then you <laughs> give another example of the same thing then you give the third example of the same thing and essentially you waste so much time i watch some guys on youtube who you know talk about meditation and thinking and all sorts of philosophical questions. And I often hate when somebody engages in, in frequent 
repetitions of the same. I think, oh man, <laughs> you're wasting my time. Just tell tell me what what you want to say without these stupid examples. But at the same time, I see how I do it myself very often. So I and the point is since I don't have a clear vision of how to move forward to allow my brain to concentrate on the next step i just repeat it not because i want to give a particular advice or to make sure that uh, i understand what i'm saying or you the listener understand under, understands <laughs> understood what i said but to allow my mind to make the next step to see to see the you know the road you know the road appears uh, before the uh, feet of the uh, what walker walker right so you have to first be willing to go and then there will be the road and this is the meditation so you don't know i don't know what exactly i'm going to say about temperance my goal is to see what i can say and I just, okay, let's go into the unknown. And I go into the unknown, something appears. Well, I, I verbalize it. I say what I think. Nothing appears. That's okay. I just stay in the same place or go, go in circles and try to, you know, try to find the way. If I didn't find the way, if I haven't found the way, that's okay. I shouldn't criticize myself and say, oh, it's stupid. I'm so terrible. I'm a fool. I don't know what I'm talking about. Why the hell I'm publishing this exercise? Why the hell I'm making fool of myself? Yeah, I, I'm not making fool of myself. <laughs> and there's, I often repeat that. I've read so many books. I've done so many exercises. I was working on philosophy for years and decades. Yeah, it helps me to keep going. See, the, the problem is that I'm a, actually an ordinary person. And I start doing philosophy without being, you know, taught in some schools and, you know, without uh, formal education. And I see that basically everybody can do the same. And I see how much I derive, how much pleasure I derive from this work. And the only thing which holds back many people is just their brain washed by their culture, their brain washed by their environment, by, by their peers, by, by teachers, by their friends and families and whatever. It's so wonderful to do this kind of mindful activity to think about what you're doing to be able to say what you feel to be able to say what you think about without being you know, self-critical and without actually being embarrassed by what you say the problem is of course if everybody now starts speaking uh, <laughs> what they are thinking about and making youtube channels like i guess youtube won't be able to <laughs> maintain uh, yeah there will be so many videos and so many people but uh, yeah, that's the idea. So I, I want to give you a sense how you, an ordinary person, can do the same work and basically develop like, such a level of uh, self-awareness and intelligence, which is unavailable to many people right now. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that it's uh, going to work immediately. So it's this work which I'm doing is like it's 10 years. So I've got here right like uh, in this moment where i am right now it took me 10 years of serious work and by serious work i mean serious work it's not the work which you do when you go and uh, perform some actions for eight hours a day five days a week uh, whatever <laughs> 12 months a year it's a work which you do all the time so i basically i focus on this work all my time i dedicate all my time to developing my thoughts developing my language developing the understanding of the world and myself studying sciences and thinking about it and at the same time i see how stupid i am my inner kind of perception of myself is well i've been studying for 14 years i've been writing on a daily basis for uh, eight years I've, I've learned two languages i know so many stuff about science and psychology philosophy myself writing speaking reading all sorts of stuff i watched hundreds of lectures from top universities and uh, it wasn't just mindless watching it was watching doing exercises regularly sometimes dedicating more time to exercises than to uh, watching stuff and still and still it feels uh, as if i'm a fucking idiot <laughs> all, all like not all the time but quite often 
And once again, I'm trying to suppress this feeling, but probably it's not a, a right way of doing that. So instead of suppressing my stupidity, instead of being ashamed of it, I have to learn to make fun of it and see uh, what's going on. Anyway, anyway, let's move on. Breath. Okay, one of the other problems which I have is constant repetition of certain non okay one of the other problems which i have when i speak is i often use the conjunction and it bothers me a lot i don't like to use this conjunction all the time but it seems that in many in many sentences i can't make a full stop Let's say I start developing a thought and it's time to finish it, but instead of finishing it, I use and, 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 and. And even if the thought is already finished, I still use and to connect it to the previous thought. I've done many exercises to learn how to get rid of it. Some of them were, one of the best was when I, repeated the previous sentence one of the best was when i repeated the previous sentence so whatever I, i'm going to say i'm going to repeat it twice so whatever i'm going to say i'm going to repeat it twice and this is how i worked for 10 15 20 minutes and this is how i worked for 10 15 20 minutes it also helped me to analyze better the grammar it also helped me to, an to analyze the grammar better <laughs> instead of better the grammar yeah so see this wonderful exercise but but what but not yeah i i'm doing it now uh, not on a regular basis but probably a few times a week sometimes more frequently sometimes less frequently i find it wonderful but still it doesn't lead to complete reduction of ends and I want to get rid of all these things. I want to be able to speak in clear sentences. When one sentence is finished, I want to make a full stop. Okay. <laughs> so this, again, this is work on mistakes. And, and see, and, and, and always <laughs> like this awareness of ends. That's what may be really useful. Every time I want to say end, yeah, I may say it. But I have to be aware that I said end. And if there's three sentences in a row, and all of them had a conjunction end, I probably have to make a pause and think what's going on. Or maybe I have to learn different ways of expressing it. Like that's why I'm studying grammar. So I'm studying grammar, studying writing trying to avoid end in every <laughs> in every in every in every like I'm, yeah i guess a good exercise may be something like writing a passage let's say few pages word pages without using end at all maybe any topic like temperance for example so i'm going to write about temperance my goal is to avoid all ends so whenever I want to say end, instead I should find a better conjunction or, or if I can't find it, I replace the sentence with a different sentence. Okay, let's continue the work. Let's get, re let's get back a little bit. And... So, thought, all goes to shut it down. So now I'm doing pretty good work in terms of differentiating between sentences, but later it will be much more terrible. Though some of these sentences, of course, are incorrect or grammatically uh, inconsistent. Inconsistent. Not just grammatically incorrect. There's still quite understandable. So they, they are coherent. If I listen to what I'm saying, I can understand it and I place myself in a I assume that I <laughs> there's some other listener 
who listens to what I'm saying, and I see that it's not so hard to understand. But later, like in five, ten minutes, I'll get to the the point where I'll just start, you know, losing all <laughs> all all consistency. Okay. So while we know ourselves to think about certain things, we will simply focus on breath and maintain this for a certain period of time. The other type of meditation, which is the type which I'm working on right now. Okay, the other type of meditation, which is which I'm working on right now. So it sounds so terrible. There's another type of meditation which I'm working on right now. Is exactly the opposite one. Okay. There's another type of meditation which I'm working on right now, and this is exactly the opposite one. I, I don't think it's a good phrase. And it's the opposite one. Okay. So, and it's the opposite one. So, instead of being silent, so instead of getting rid of all my thoughts, what I'm trying to do is to speak as much as possible. Okay. So, instead of being silent, instead of shutting down my inner dialogue, yeah, it's like I, I said before. In this video at the beginning, I want to stop my. Like there's one type of meditation when you stop your inner dialogue, but here I said like stream of consciousness or whatever. So it makes sense to be aware of words which uh, have been used already and uh, which have been already used, and uh, use the same words. And in me, I see this, you know. Striving for originality, I often use different words just to make my speech more exciting. Since I find it dull, if uh, you know, once again somebody repeats the same phrases, like in logic, for example, you may say. Well, I don't, I don't, I can't find a suitable example right now, but there are lots of them. <laughs> Think about them on your own. So there's if X, then Y, if Y, then B, if Y, then Z, if Z, then, then, then A. And sometimes this uh, if X, then Y, but then if not if Y, but if Y prime and Y prime basically is an expression which is uh, different from Y. If I go for a walk, I think about prudence or well, temperance. If I go for a walk, I think about temperance. If I see meditate on temperance, I try to look for unusual thoughts so i said if i meditate instead of i think so i said if i go for a walk i think about temperance if i meditate on temperance i try to look for unusual thoughts if i search extraordinary if I search for extraordinary ideas, I <laughs> I make fool of myself. Anyway, so see the 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 point here is that instead of re, instead of replacing the same words with uh, different words which express the same idea, which refer to the same phenomena, it's much better to use the same words. So when I go for a walk, I, I think. I think about temperance. When I think about temperance, I try to find an original you know, ideas. When I when I try to find the original ideas, I look like a fool or whatever. So this is like it's much stronger way of delivering information to be clear. Sometimes, of course, it may sound dull, 
but if there is a purpose to like share information or to understand something it's much better to use this way of thinking well, probably it feels like it's better than to try to be original and uh, replace every every phrase with different phrase when you refer to the same experience or the same idea speak as much as possible. You may think about it as, a, as an exercise where, for example, somebody helps you to relax, I suppose. Yeah, no, I want to give an example. Yeah. You may think about it as an exercise when somebody tells you to relax. Is it an exercise? So it's probably to replace it with the word situation, right? So you may you may imagine yourself in a situation when somebody tells you to relax. And again, uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to say, I'm going to give an example how you can see better the difference between two types. And to illustrate this example, I use a particular situation. But again, I'm using words like exercise. Let's try to... Again, to illustrate it better, imagine yourself in a situation when somebody tells you to relax. Relax. And usually it doesn't work. Again, usually it doesn't work. Yeah. So if you yeah. need to relax, you have to get rid of your nervousness. But it's impossible to do if you simply tell yourself, I have to relax or I have to stop being nervous. Yeah, you know, if somebody tells you, not if you tell yourself. Since I'm trying to present a case where somebody, uh, there's probably two people or many people, and uh, you want to relax, and you need to relax. And somebody tells you relax, but it makes you more nervous. So instead of that, imagine that somebody tells you, be as nervous as possible. Are you nervous? No, you are not nervous. But show me the superlative of nervousness. Be, be very nervous. Yeah, I see now it's a, it's a wonderful example in terms of this struggle with foolishness. So instead of being critical of uh, oneself, right? If uh, there's a goal to get rid of your foolishness or to improve your grammar, your language, I try to be as foolish as possible. <laughs> Probably it makes sense to prepare for any meditation any recording in this way so when it starts okay now i'm going to be as foolish as possible whatever i'm going to say must be stupid and grammatically incoherent and correct and 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 there may be and in every sentence like try to use <laughs> try to use and in every sentence not to avoid and but to use it all the time and in every uh, simple sentence, use ends as well, like a uh, compound sentence and complex sentence. In this case, you may exaggerate on your nervousness and uh, hopefully and, uh, and, uh, and uh, again, you will find that after five, 10, 15 minutes, you'll be able to calm down after simply because you exhaust all your nervousness and you will see how easy it is actually to be nervous. It's the same the thing I'm doing here. All right, so there are three minutes. I'm not sure that I want to continue working on this video for longer. I mean, I'm going to work on this video without recording it, of course. Since it slows me down, I see that no, I have to talk aloud while I'm analyzing this video and it makes me feel also <laughs> not as I want to feel oh man I see now I started again making mistakes and there there's some nervousness so I but it's and it's too long I mean I'm talking about it for half an hour 
or even longer. So it's time to finish. Well, stop, 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 stop. So I think you got the idea. When you want to work on your language and your performance and your speech, first you record the video, then you go back and you watch the video once again and you talk about it and see, you analyze your own mistakes and work on them. And then probably you record another video when you analyze this one. Yeah, I probably, I'm going to, I probably, I'm, I'm probably going to do that uh, later and see it and see <laughs> see how it's going to work i guess it's going to sound very silly and why not to look at it and you know whatever let's finish here